Now, the long-term effect of taking corticosteroids like prednisone or some type of cortisol cream, it's pretty nasty. It's pretty nasty. It has some major side effects. And personally, I ended up with poison ivy pretty much every year in my 20s and 30s, and I was forced to take these corticosteroids, and they started developing all sorts of side effects till the point where it didn't work anymore, okay? And so if I get poison ivy on my body and it gets to my face, I will look like Quasimodo, okay? I mean, like my whole face just swells up. I remember one time doing a video and I wore dark glasses because my eyes were, you couldn't even see my eyes. There was just so much puffiness. So it's pretty nasty. So the more prednisone someone ends up having to take long-term, the more um, susceptible they are to getting corticosteroid resistance, where they're in a situation where it just doesn't work anymore. So that's a pretty bad condition to be in because what these steroids do is they get rid of inflammation primarily. They actually shut down the immune system. That's how they do it. So people take prednisone and also corticosteroid injections and creams for various reasons, autoimmune disorders, especially rheumatoid arthritis, especially psoriasis, especially MS, lupus, and a whole bunch of other autoimmune diseases. Some people with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease take it, uh, definitely asthmatics, people with IBS, people with skin conditions. If you go to a dermatologist, chances are you're gonna get some type of steroid cream. And also if you have some type of organ transplant, they use these steroids. So the side effects, cataracts, you get moody. Okay, you can ask my wife, I was very moody. Weight gain, I have a very interesting picture which I'll put up now of me in my 30s when I was trying to do some rock climbing. You can see I had a pizza crust, okay, after taking steroids. Then you can have a condition called Cushing syndrome, right? That's a condition where you have like a, a moon face, the gut, you lose your leg muscles and your butt muscles. And I've done videos on the adrenal body type, and that's really Cushing syndrome or a version of Cushing syndrome. Diabetes is a symptom. I had a very good friend who had to take prednisone for um, a trigeminal neuralgia problem, right? A nerve problem and destroyed his life. Um, osteoporosis is a side effect. But I think the biggest side effect is this right here, immunosuppression, which is the same thing as immunodeficiency. Basically, you no longer have the full strength of your innate immune system, okay? The immune system is just very, very weak and it's susceptible to getting bacterial infections and viral infections. And these microbes are opportunistic. Okay, what does that mean? It means they take advantage of a situation. When your immune system is strong, they don't mess with you because the barriers are too high. But when your barriers are low and you're more susceptible and vulnerable to things, then they kind of kick you when you're down. They're pretty evil. So this gives you another side effect of these corticosteroids, which is basically secondary infections. So is there some solution to this? The answer is yes, okay? And I'm gonna give you a solution. The best thing you could do is start taking vitamin D3 in higher amounts, like at least 20,000 I use, but preferably 30 or even more international units of vitamin D3. Just make sure you don't take vitamin D2. I'm not gonna get into it in this video. I'll have to do a, a special video just on D2, but you want D3. Very, very important, especially what it does to the vitamin D receptor. So vitamin D is really not a vitamin. It is a natural over-the-counter steroid, okay? It is like a healthy version of prednisone, okay? Without the side effects. So this is really important and you'll probably do very well from this alone, but there's other things I'm gonna recommend like plant steroids. So there are natural corticosteroids, okay, in plants. Now, steroids are a, kind of a, a category of a lot of different things. You have like um, steroid hormones, like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, things like that. The plant steroids that I'm gonna recommend for you are gonna be the ones that mimic the corticosteroids, the ones that are primarily gonna affect inflammation. One's called false unicorn root, okay, that's a Chinese herb. 
Next one is licorice root, okay? And then fenugreek, okay? These are three good plant steroids that can create different effects on the body. Like this one right here is really good for skin conditions like psoriasis, right? Licorice root is a really good anti-inflammatory all over, including histamines. It's kind of like a natural histamine. And then fenugreek is really good for lung inflammation and other types of inflammation as well. There's a lot of anti-inflammatory properties in different plants like turmeric and garlic and thyme and things like that. But the anti-inflammatories I'm going to recommend are basically plant steroids, okay? Number three, you want to get a good adrenal glandular extract product. It's going to be bovine from a cow. I would recommend getting the grass-fed version and also freeze-dried. Why? Because when I was in practice, I would always use the adrenal glandulars to help people with inflammatory conditions, helping them come off steroids in this transition step. It just supports the key gland that makes these steroids, which is the adrenal gland. So this is essential. And then number four, and this is interesting, Tatka is a synthetic bile product that can do a lot of things, but it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. Now you could also use other uh, purified bio salts too, if this is not available, uh, it will work. But now why would Tatka help this condition? Because bile salts have the ability to activate the vitamin D receptor. So if there is a problem with the vitamin D receptor for various reasons, whether it's genetics or another common reason, bacteria in your body and viruses have a certain strategy that they can block the vitamin D receptor in your body. So it shuts down your immune system so they can actually you know, do whatever they want in your body. So it just so happens that you can use a bile salt to open up the vitamin D receptor and trigger the cascade of effects that occur within the immune system that's supposed to be occurring from vitamin D, but if it's blocked, you can use this too. And I'll tell you where I got this information from. There's a, it's called the Marshall Protocol. This Dr. Marshall came up with a protocol that uses uh, a combination of antibiotics long-term, which I don't like that option, <clears throat> and Benicar, which is a high blood pressure medication uh, to treat autoimmune diseases. Now, Benicar is a unique drug in that it can also open up the vitamin D receptor, okay? It can mimic vitamin D, even though it's not vitamin D. But the problem is there's side effects from high blood pressure medication, and also you need a prescription, okay? Tadka and other purified bile salts, you don't need a prescription. So if you were going to do some research on this, you would have to know um, the terminology to search for. And it would be the VDR analog, the vitamin D receptor analog, which is basically something that mimics something. So this would mimic vitamin D. All right. So now that you have a good alternative to corticosteroids, I think the next most important video for you to watch would be the one on vitamin D. So check out this video in relationship to inflammation. I put it up right here.